Grammar Girl here. Hi, I'm Mignon Fogarty, and today I'm doing video instead of audio because I want to show you how I organize my next book, The Grammar Devotional. I didn't use a spreadsheet, I didn't use a content management system, I used plain old paper and pens and tape, and I stuck it up on my wall. So why would I do such a thing? <laughs> Well, The Grammar Devotional is a book with 365 individual tips to help you improve your writing and grammar. And um, that means a lot of organization because each tip is separate, but they have to go in a certain order and some need to come before others. And I originally started organizing it on a spreadsheet and I got about halfway through the book and realized that just wasn't working. I was spending all my time cutting and pasting and scrolling and searching and, and I couldn't see the big picture of the book. So um, I was fortunate enough right around that time to have run into two people who suggested um, paper. The first was the organizational team at Kripalo, the yoga retreat where I spoke a few months ago. And they took me into their control room where they organize all their, um, their schedule. And they have a huge wall with colored post-its and they move them all around and they just raved about how well that worked for organizing. They could see the whole year schedule at a time and if more students or fewer students enrolled in a class and they needed to switch rooms, they could just like zip zip switch it and it was no problem. And then about two weeks after that, I spoke at uh, the Fields and Writers Conference in Bainbridge Island, Washington. And I was fortunate enough to sit in on a talk by Mary Gooderson, who's an author who wrote a novel and was talking about her writing process. And she talked about how she cut her novel up and went to a hotel room and spread all the pages and different scenes around to make sure that she hadn't missed any plot points and that all the character arcs happened at the same, um, at the right time. So with all that great advice from other people, I decided to move forward with paper. I printed my book out on a teeny tiny font on paper. I cut apart every entry and then I took highlighters of different colors and gave codes to every different kind of entry. So I've got um, yellow is a language rock star. This is someone you should know about if you consider yourself a serious writer. And the V's are, word, are entries that compare two different words. So who versus that, um, affect versus effect. The blue boxed entries are punctuation and I pretty much knew I wanted punctuation entries to be every Monday. Once I had my entries categorized, I arranged them on a grid that covered the entire year and it became instantly apparent where things needed to go. I had punctuation every Monday. I had language rock stars every other Wednesday. Um, quizzes and word jumbles are on Fridays because we want Fridays to be fun. And Sundays, because those entries, those pages in the book are actually bigger, we have illustrations, which are the uh, orange flower symbol and word searches. Uh, this one, actually the other thing that became clear is I had enough entries to make uh, an entire week devoted to words that come from Latin and that ends with a Latin word search puzzle and word search puzzles are always on Sundays. So when things were laid out I could also see that entries that needed to go together I could make them touch so I wouldn't forget they had to go together and accidentally move one and not the other and then when I needed to move two entries, instead of cutting and pasting and searching and scrolling on my spreadsheet, I could just go, oh, well, this, uh, this would go better here, this word jumble goes better in this week, and voila, it was finished. I, I wasn't constantly looking for where I wanted to put things. Then I had a list of topics that I had left to write, because I was about halfway through the book, and I could see where all the holes were, and then I could look at the I could look at the grid and see what topics that I had left would fit well in the holes that were left. So it just became so much easier to organize the book. And so the quick and dirty tip is if you have a big project to organize, like a book, consider using paper. It really, for me, it worked much better than a spreadsheet. This week we're sponsored by Audible, the internet's leading provider of spoken word entertainment. If you type in audiblepodcast.com slash gg, you'll get to a page like this one. You can sign up for a free trial and get an audiobook to keep, even if you cancel. Once you're a member like me, you can go to the next page and search for any book you want to buy. I see that they're featuring Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies this week. That looks like a good one to try. Let's listen to the reader and see if it sounds good. Mr. Bennett was among the earliest of those who waited on Mr. Bingley. 
He had always intended to visit him, though to the last always assuring his wife that he should not go. Yeah, I'd listen to that. You can also search for Money Girl for our new book from Quick and Dirty Tips, Money Girl's Guide to Retirement Planning. Audible now has over 60,000 titles for you to choose from, so really pick any book you want. That's all. Thanks for watching.